ask questions. I'll just finish with a kind of a general reflection, because it is interesting, and it's nice when you talk about the drugs and, and you know, what they cure and what, what the treatments are. Don't you find it very interesting that the pharmaceutical industry has a bad reputation? I mean, we read about the China uh, corruption, we read about profits, and we read about uh, profiteering, and it is an industry that saves lives. No one can dispute that. It's an industry that produces you know, pills that are completely transforming for people's, people's welfare. And yet, it's actually not a terribly popular industry. I just wonder if you could explain that paradox. Is it that you've done bad things and you, you, that's been recognized? Or is there somehow something the public don't understand about the industry that makes them feel negative about it? I mean, it or am, am I wrong in thinking that there's no, a slight I mean, I mean, rumor around Clearly, that, yeah, you know, yeah. like, uh, so first of all, I think we are slightly alongside any big industry yeah. or any big institution. Big business, yeah. yeah it's negative, there is a yeah. bit of that. Um, we are big companies, we're global, mm -hmm. and again, like any big organization, you're vulnerable to your weakest link in the organization. So if, if something goes wrong, and particularly in today's world, social media world, mm -hmm. um, you know, I often think about what it must have been like to run a global company in the 70s, where it, you, know, you had to wait for the ship to arrive <laughs> to find out what happened on the other side of the world. Today, you know, you've, Wall Street Journal calls you before before you've even heard about something inside your own company. So there's a, I do think there is a certain phenomena where, and you see that across many, many you look at it in politics, you look at it in newspapers, the hacking uh, stories, yeah, yeah, yeah. all things like that. So I think there's a bit of that. I do think, let's be honest, nobody wakes up in the morning hoping that they're going to need a drug from GSK. You don't wake up in the morning thinking, actually, if it's a really good day, I might be, might be diagnosed to be ill right, and I might right. need a drug. So that is, we're not aspirational in that sense. <laughs> so you start by saying, actually, I've got some bad news because right. I've been told I'm not very well. They then said we might have some good news because there's something we can help you with. And then in some countries, I have to pay for it, right? Yeah, yeah. And as a, or in Britain, you might go to the doctor and they say, actually, I'd like to give you this, but nice have said I can't. Mm. So then there's a whole series of reasonably negative concepts yeah. around pricing, around illness. Yeah, all yeah, of yeah. that illness. There was a yeah, bit of that. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got, actually, we do occasionally make mistakes. I mean, you know, things go wrong. We have inevitably in, pharma, in anything, as soon as you, I often think, you know, we, we, of course, we go through all the processes with the regulators to get a drug to be as safe and effective as it can possibly be. But the reality is, Every time a human takes a drug, it's like a clinical trial. You don't really know what's mm -hmm. going to happen. Everybody can react a different way. So on the one hand, what, what is the story of the drug industry? The story of a drug industry is wonder drugs. And on the other mm -hmm. hand, it's danger drugs. And, and those are the two extremes that we have. It's kind of so, unavoidable. So you're saying, oh, you know, there are bad apples and it goes wrong. I mean, is that right? Or is it, for example, in the China case, was it that there was bad apple and it went wrong? Or was it that that was normal behavior in certain markets and it just got called out in that particular case well, for reasons that... that I, so I don't want to... I, for yeah, yeah, obvious yeah, yeah, reasons, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah, going to yeah, get yeah, into yeah, yeah. all of but the But was it normal that, behavior? It, was that behavior actually something or was it just a slight extension of behavior? Well, is, I think, I think the bigger question is where do you want to go forward? Now, if you look at what we... No, but just answer that one. I mean, whether well, it was, no, there's no doubt. If you, if you ask the more general question, so there have been concerns over the years of is the drug industry transparent enough? Yeah. What's the relationship of the drug industry with... Doctors, yeah. all of those are kind of concerns. Let's call them concerns, concerns or you know, yeah, reasons yeah. for anxiety, whatever they are. And sometimes they've spiked up into real issues. What we've really tried to do, and we're beginning to see some other companies, I think, following a similar direction, is we said, you know what? We get that. We get that transparency is a cause of concern. People are worried that something's been hidden. But we didn't think there was, but people are, and perception is everything, right? So what did we do? We came out and said, we will publish every single bit of clinical data we have in the company. We, we are the only company to do that at this point. Every single thing. If a researcher wants to know exactly what the data was on patient number, not all, all anonymized, yeah. but on patient number 1002 in clinical trial 87 from 2002, we will give them that information. Mm. All the way through... So we'll do that. We've said we will stop all payments to physicians to speak on behalf of the company. It's perfectly legal practice. I think everything the company's so, done but, in but that this space, is but a we recognition, and, I, and, I, and, I, and there is a lot you've done to, to you know, 
present these things differently, but I'm, it is a recognition that it was pretty dysfunctional before. Well, it? I think it's a recognition to say... publishing data, to me, honestly, doesn't seem like a great achievement. It just seems to me that that's what you should be doing with data. Except, and interestingly not enough... not bribing doctors seems like a thing you would do. Well, and, so and I wouldn't say it's bribing doctors. Well, I, think I mean, it's but perfectly, it's on that fuzzy boundary. It's perfectly it? legal yeah, it's, yeah. to pay... If, so if you went to a physician yeah, and said, yeah, yeah. would you expect to be paid for speaking on behalf of them? They would probably say yes. Yeah, and actually, yeah. in most countries in the world, it's perfectly legal. Yeah. However, it, there are risks that it can be abused, people can, do, right. uh, can make mistakes, and there are risks that there is a misperception. Now, just to your point on publication, do you think academics are mandated to publish their data? No, 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 no. I mean, I understand. Do you think, do you think universities publish all their failed no. studies? No. They no, don't. I mean, no, I know, and I think and, there's a but huge we do. issue around but universities and replicability and all of these right. kinds of things. Right, so, so yeah. your, point, your observation is not really okay. on the money. I okay. think the point is there is a general sense in the world where not everything historically has been published. Academia doesn't work to that yeah. standard. Yeah. We've taken the view that, there is, that time has changed. It's time to look forward. It's time to fundamentally do things differently. That's why we made those commitments several years ago. It's why we've li liberalized our approach to intellectual property in the emerging markets for a very similar but different set of reasons, because there was a concern that IP was somehow getting in the way of access. That's why we liberalized right. our approach in the emerging markets, and it's why we've changed our approach to the way we interact with physicians. It's why we've changed the approach yeah, to how no, we pay no. our representatives. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think I'm very proud of a company that's prepared to try and move forward and fundamentally, <laughs> uh, quite brave actually, fundamentally, engage in a different business model, not just to how the rest of my peers operate, but how almost everybody in this healthcare industry operates.